everyone. Welcome to this session. I'm very excited to introduce Vicki, who will be discussing facilitating an exemplary course. I think you guys are in for a real treat. So let's uh, take it away. Okay. Welcome to ex facilitating an exemplary course. Um, this is a presentation presented by Jan, Dr. Jan Luder, who's not here tonight, but we're representing him here from the School of Applied Leadership. And I am um, Dr. Vicki Butler, and I'm with the Albright School of Education. We're going to be talking about um, we're going to be talking about an introduction to exemplary design, kind of going through the the course. And I'm going to take you through this particular Blackboard course. This will be um, an overview, kind of the backstory. This was a collaborative process between the School of Applied, Ed, Applied Leadership, e-learning, and our library staff. It was a process that I've been able to now see the results and the product by being able to teach through this course of, on online, um, online instructional technology and online instruction. It was an opportunity to really see the role of collaboration and what we can do with our courses, whatever department we're in, when we combine resources. Um, the e-learning has a team that's willing and ready to jump in and help in this process. And what I learned was how, how important and impactful our resources are in the library, our librarians that are associated with each of our schools. That is a very important piece. Um, with this process, the school one what received an award um, from a, an award on this particular class for exemplary course from the Blackboard Exemplary Course Program. There's a link in your um, presentation in this presentation that you will be able to go back to and read about this. But it really is was again that collaboration as you can see. Um, between Whitney Boswell from the library, Mary Mara, and, and Dr. Pr um, Presley Rankin. The other piece was a walkthrough that was designed, a walkthrough of the course designed by um, Jan. And just a second, I actually have that for you right just a brief, just, I'm going to give you a brief, brief tour. Well, except that it changed. So that link will take you to the brief tour of how um, Jan's class was put together. It's a fascinating, a fascinating piece. And it gives a lot of clues how you, how we, as we're looking at our courses, can work on redesigning and adding the depth that this particular piece has had. Looking at the syllabus and tying in just from a, a strong frame, the, this course explores how educators can effectively incorporate technology, both in person and online, to enhance the learning process and improve outcomes. These are tools, this is a process that in K-12 is fairly transparent nowadays. And it's a process that's really becoming more evident in our in our online courses, in our university courses. The key piece really truly is integration and collaboration, not just in the building of the course, but within the teaching and the facilitating of the course. Not just with the instructors or assessors, but also with the students. So it's a tiered process. In this particular course, um, there was a great deal of technology, which makes sense. And a lot of the collaboration came with the wikis and the discussions and the commentary um, on voiceovers, that, that true implementation of what was happening. The alignment, when I take a look at the syllabus, the alignment of this course matches the CULGs in terms of global learning, um, integration of technology, best practices, the course outcomes align 
perfectly with the assignments. And the assignments are also scaffolded. And I'm going to take you through some of that. So each module's, each module's resources and, and artifacts build toward a for, more formative, uh, more summative outcome. So within the course, I'm going to take us to the course just to give you a very quick tour, knowing that I'm not showing names or anything um, of that source. As I look at this course and I'm just looking at course content, the first thing that struck me um, and, and something that I want to see implemented in our, our education courses um, First was the clarity. Here's our module one. Course outcomes, objectives, due dates, all the way through. Um, activities, what's going to be happening? And as I went through and started truly exploring this and going through this for the first time with the students, I could see where, where that scaffolding and building was. And as they were moving through, they're like, oh, yeah. Here, this is where I could build this part, move forward in this. The other part, I've always looked at announcements as announcements. Here's a bunch of information. Here's my reflection on your discussions. Here's what's coming up. What happened here is that there really was encouragement to do some playing, add some pieces. So with that, starting from the very beginning, um, welcome to class posts. I, I'm not great at doing the video posts, but I can incorporate other pieces into this and have my students see a little bit more about who I was, where things were, and share some personal pieces with them. Simple, free, interact interactive collabor collaboration. Those are my former kids, aren't they, darling? They're a little bit younger. Okay. Oh, wait, that was our, that was the alligator. You do anything for your students. Interaction, collaboration, um, I think this is like a Python thing, and this kid was particularly afraid of those. I am not a Python person, um, even, in, even in technology. Um, and then this is, they're an alligator, a crocodile, and I was not prepared for this. Kind of like jumping into courses. What I found, though, is by making my announcements interactive and engaging, I had much better feedback from our students. They were eager to find out what was going to happen. These were just the word. These are wordles. They're word clouds of one of the um, one of the wiki projects that they did. I just threw them in. Um, shared some other pieces. And amazingly, one of the pieces of announcements, just integrating that technology, giving them opportunities to play with it, was playing with um, Vokies. The students were, well, they were excited. They asked for accounts. And so this is, if you could hear this, this would be me talking. And it was around Valentine's Day, and I could get the information across. I was having fun. They were having fun. And then they made themselves accounts, and they played. My thought on this, I would love to see it. Um, I would really love to see our students have the opportunity to go forward, go forward and play, play themselves with those, with those ideas. The other Boki, just to share, there's different styles. So here was another one, which doesn't look like me. It looks like how I want to look, but in this nice, orderly classroom, which is also not me. But it was a great, they had great fun exploring, putting, putting on some different personas for this. Jumping ahead. I want to, as I'm going to go through, I'm going to jump back and forth between screens. So. Um, that's kind of the joy of technology. Okay, the bringing Vokies, bringing life into your classroom, Animotos, places where you can share, places where they can do presentations, make it meaningful at whatever level 
whatever, graduate, undergraduate, K through 12, it was fascinating. I wanted to go through the types of online education that what this is module two, two types of online education. As I kind of showed you, every module has an overview, the objectives and the activities, very straightforward, very clear, very defined, very structured. The required resources, uh, thankfully, with the, with the librarians, with e-learning, we're able to compile wonderful required resources, a, a variety of, of um, truly a large variety of media, um, articles, books available to our students, as well as additional resources, modeling some of the integrated technology we wanted to see. The, the weekly activities. And a good example of how these weekly activities pulled together, weekly activities for module two was a wiki on online education terms. And I'm going to take you through that in just a second. And that moved to module three, which was on educational technologies. And this was another collaborative uh, resource, actually a repository that the students created based on understanding wikis, applying, applying that, moving on, putting them in a different place. And then it culminated in a paper, um, a traditional paper, um, for educa on educational technology evaluation. The key point in this part was that through three units, actually four with the introduction, for four units, they were playing and engaging in the technologies, in the vocabulary. They were a part of that process. So when they came to write the paper, they'd already experienced it. They already had formed their own definitions. They knew what they, they, knew what they were talking about, and they were eager to share that. And that was um, common throughout, this, throughout the, the process. Okay, I am going to go back to the course just a second. So I want to show you what that looks like within this particular module. So I'm going to module two, which I just talked to you about. My introduction, all of that, my required, the required resources that they had, these here, these are from some, from some books. Uh, there's another book chapter, some video that they could explore. And then they had their wiki. Uh, and they had to, after reading about hybrid, blended, flipped, and inverted classrooms, they went back and together, creating a wiki, went back and forth with each other to develop a final definition and justification for each of these as a group. That, then you had your additional resources, which were fun. That then led to their module three, where again, they're creating, they're creating a wiki on instructional technologies, tools for learning, a different type of a purpose for this wiki was more for um, kind of doing an annotated bibliography, if you will, for this presentation, for the presentation or for their upcoming paper. Wonderful resources for them to use. And I love this part, preview for the next module, and that's where the paper came in. Flipping back to here, full screen. The model, I'm not showing you the wiki as it is because of all the student names, but this is what happened with that wiki. With all of the students participating, they had to come up with a one sentence definition based on what they had read. So it's a really succinct summary. What is a hybrid learning? What is it? What is flipped? What is blended? And these are mixed, just random students. And then a justification. 
why, how would you use this in education? Why would you use this in education? What type of student would it benefit? That makes you stop and pause because we're not just using integrated technology to use technology. There needs to be a purpose behind it. The final piece was that they had to take a look at everyone's definitions and everyone's justifications and choose what did they feel was the really was the best definition and they gave their explanation. I chose S's definition of hybrid, a course offered with dual delivery with both in-person and with the use of technology. I selected Z's justification. In my view, hybrid learning best supports those learners who feel comfortable using technology but still prefer human contact interaction with classmates and instructors. This happened all within the wiki with it from a Thursday to a Sunday when the final this final um, pres or definition was posted. Students were actively engaged. They were commenting back and forth in their, in the, within the wiki. And I have to say, I was a little reluctant. This is a wiki in Blackboard. I was just a little reluctant on how this would play out. I definitely see how this works with our, with our pieces. The other part was, oh, this is kind of the extension of that. I took these and put them into Wordles, which you saw on the announcement page. And the Wordle is, a, is the word cloud portion of that. And hang on. This is not always as seamless as uh, we seem. Come back. Yeah, it's here. It's here. It's here. Well, there it is. OK, the Wordle portion, I'm back right here, is um, these are, these are free integrated technologies. Here's the summary. It's, it's really generating word clouds, pulling out the highlights. For me to be able to take what they had put down, then put it into a Wordle, pull out the main points, and give them to them, to them as a feedback announcement was amazing. Their engagement, I've seen this in other classes too. This is a free, a free opportunity to play. Okay, on to my next fun things. Then, another part. So you have all these, you have these cap, this captive audience pulling together information regarding instructional technology reviews. Students were asked to play, find, what are, what are some technologies used specifically for instruction? How do you use these specifically for instruction? They did the research on them, they put it together, and then they made voiceover presentations. Those voiceover presentations were posted in the discussion board for feedback and comments on them. Students were able then, then this became a repository for them of reviewed, reviewed instructional technologies that they chose that would benefit them in whatever area they were working in. This was this is one of the um, this was a wiki again on that, and they created Duolingo, Feedly. They put their comments in and how they would how it would be used. With that, back to my beautiful word cloud. Now I know where everything is. This is what they ended up with. This went out to them. So they have the names, they have what technology was reviewed in their course, what's the description, and how might it be, how might you use it as a learning application. Along with this, they have a little video presentation for every single one of these that's very short. Looking through here, these are some things I wanted to play, and I pieces that I think I could easily send out to our instructors to say, if you have a chance, or maybe we just need to schedule a play day, and try, how can we add different pieces into our instruction 
to make it engaging, to meet all the objectives and have it aligned and still have students really take ownership of what's happening in their learning. Um, I was I was impressed with the amount of energy and time um, these students put into into discovering things that would work for themselves. I think that was the that was my favorite favorite part. So that was just that little review there. Then um, I we we put them into exploring technology for business. I don't spend a lot of time exploring technology for business. Um, it's not my area of expertise. Oh, thank you. I'm not even going to be short this time. Um, just got the five minute warning. Um, but I am going to take you back to this because uh, let me find it one second. Okay, it's right here. So when I go this was too, this was exciting. These are things that the students found themselves. Okay, this is, this is posted in the discussion board. They used Katura um, to post these. It was absolutely amazing. Close your eyes just for a second, please. So, uh, close your eyes. Okay, now you're not going to see, see any of this. Watch me do close your eyes. Okay, thank you. This here, there's the closed caption. This person is giving a voice overview, explaining what's going on in this video, in this interactive game type training. Now, frankly, we just did some of those law classes. Wouldn't it be really fun to have some of that information in a kind of interactive how not to do form? There was your how not to do. And uh, just, I, you have to have a bit of fun playing with these things. Yes. Definitely have to have fun. Okay. At the end, the discussion board reflected back at to what the students did we did how did this help them? Did we meet our goals and objectives? Did did we include collaboration? What what did they say? And this are these are their just, you know, this is a part of their discussion piece. Now, my journey in the course has increased my knowledge on available technolo ed educational technologies. I can thoughtfully choose technologies that will enhance the learning experience. I can create a learning environment designed for diverse learners and exhibit professional competency. What more as an instructor could I want with a sense that this person is going to be able to go out and dabble and put what she needs or he needs to have into their business or their educational setting and be successful. Returning to goals, I would say that City University helped me understand how to demonstrate diverse and global perspectives within my own educational settings. This was an interesting discussion because Diversity, what is diversity on, in an online environment? How are you taking um, advantage of bringing in other people's perspectives? Does it matter if it's a female voice or a male voice? And, and that, these were some of the interesting pieces these students brought forward. Um, and then collaboration. I've been able to hear from classmates from diverse backgrounds with many different goals they wish to achieve once they have completed this program. This is the goal I think we did best on. Being able to have discussions with classmates who have different goals has allowed me to learn more about fields and careers I knew little about, about before. That, that's, that's what I want as an instructor. What we had to... Um, that embedded in here were, were some of the Blackboard tools, tools. Kaltura, the media mashup tool, that's in Blackboard on the left-hand side under tools. Blackboard Collaborate Ultra, we use that a lot with our faculty meetings. Um, and I found that to be more and more intuitive as I play. Wikis, I'm going to play more with. They take a little bit to set up, but they're definitely one of those Blackboard tools. and e-learning people, Blackboard support people, librarian people, 
can help you take that forward. And I think the, the important piece through all of this besides, besides play, which I think is an important part of innovation, it's not to, the important thing is to not, not to stop questioning. Curiosity has its own reason for existing. And that is exactly, that's, that's a passion. That's something we need to have. So with that, thanks. And any questions?